Okay then folks, another mission. This time I've swapped up my outfit. This is mission five. Legendary Dark Knight playthrough. I've been reading some comments of what people have been mentioning about Virgil and just on some of the observations that I've made myself. Uh, there's parts of this character I really dislike. Watch this, watch what happens. Look at the concentration meter. See this? I'm stood still. Now I have full concentration. I move towards an enemy. And because, oh there you go, I just lost some for moving towards an enemy to attack because the game thinks I want to run away. That is terrible, I think. So the game wants you to stand here like an idiot and teleport around with the buster move or get smacked by a giant scythe like I just did then. Because when you move without firing, it loses your, your bar. So me and this character will never get on because of that one thing. And I forgot what difficulty I was on here because I can't fucking see as per usual. Uh, can we do this? We can see. Wow, straight to A. That is amazingly overpowered, dude. So yeah, just, just parts of this difficulty I can't really get behind, because uh, I find it really confusing. Uh, I say difficulty. The character, it's Virgil. Virgil, for some reason, is meant to be played standing and not moving. And when you do move, you have to do the teleport to make him move, and I, and I find that to be absolutely baffling. Like, when you get your concentration meter to full, it should stay there until you get hit. That, to me, is how that mechanic should work, but instead they've, they've got this, this really weird system of... If you miss an attack, in a game where missing attacks is really easy to do. Really easy to do. But yet, I don't know. It seems like such a strange thing. But a couple of other things people have been talking about is that, which is... It's a just-released judgement cut. Which means it, you release it with better timing than that one. And if you look online right now, a lot of people are calling it a just frame judgment cut. Or they're saying JFJC, which is the most confusing acronym in the world. Which basically means if you hold the attack after, you see how it flashes like that? That means that I'm now charging the judgment cut. However, if I release my charge, the moment the sword glows white, or the moment you see the glow, it will give you an animation that is both stronger and faster. It's about half the size of the animation. So this is what the animation looks like normally. He dashes back, he does the judgement cut. If you time it better, which is not that, that's bad timing. That's bad timing too. That's bad timing too. So is that. So is that. So is that. There it was. That is the the perfect timing on that move. And what was that? I got it one out of seven attempts or something silly. That is the move that is being used this crazy acronym for. And it's an incredibly powerful move because you can do it after anything. When you're in the air, which I'm apparently not too good at doing. Like, you can... It, it's, it's one of those moves where... The game doesn't mention it, because it's been in the game before this. It's been in a lot of different games. And uh, I actually got a message from Bic on, on Twitter saying that he thought it was esoteric, and he don't know why the game is that way. Well, all games were that way, Bic. And then we did this thing where we simplified them, and we spoon-feed everybody information. And you, it, it, this game is esoteric, I'm not even going to argue that point, but not in the mechanics. The mechanics have depth. And it's this thing that separates good players from people who aren't so good. Because anybody can realise that there is a difference between that animation and that. There's a big difference, but you don't know why. So it strives you as a player to figure it out and to get better. And that understanding is what divides the true depth of a game. And it gives the combat the mastery level that not a lot of games have. Which is why people will be playing this for a very long time, just like they're still playing 4, just like they're still playing 3. Because it has that measure of depth. Is it frustrating when you don't know? Hell yes. Is it annoying that the game doesn't inform you of these awesome things? It is, but that is the mentality that birthed these games. Like, it's a very Hideki Kamiya kind of mentality. 
Because in the original Devil May Cry, there was a critical hit system that would instantly kill enemies. Instantly kill them. And the game never told you much about it. It just kind of put it in there, and it trusted the player to figure it out. And that's what people did. And now, you can see videos of, of almost every enemy on that game getting ruined by really precise, awesome looking things. But it was never really elaborated on or explained in a way that you would expect it to be, because that's just not the kind of game it was ever meant to be. Like, these niche communities grow from these games because they are so very particular in the way they operate. And I love it. And I love it that it gives you that opportunity to figure it out. Because so many games don't anymore. Like, we've got everything in our face. All the time. So that there is no complexity, there is no true depth. And it's... There used to be a time where you needed other people to, to help you understand things. A community of people coming together to figure things out. And that's a lot of the magic that's been captured in games like Dark Souls. Or, or even fighting games to a certain extent. Because in a fighting game, you have your base mechanics that to some people look just like base mechanics. But then it goes so much deeper with all the technology that evolves through people playing it. And realising how they can exploit the systems. And half of these systems aren't even intentional. They just are an outcome of players banging on the game a lot. And it's, it's that really, really interesting thing. And if the game did tell you all this subtlety, and all these things that probably weren't even intended, it'd be like seeing a magic trick and knowing how it works. The magic would be gone. And I think that's what... It's, it's a mentality that we don't much have anymore because of the way that the game industry is going. And I can completely understand why it frustrates Big because he's the type of player that doesn't want to really waste the time of figuring things out. He wants the game to show him and he wants to use those tools to overcome it at its hardest level, because that's what he likes to do. He doesn't like puzzles, he doesn't like, you know, choice. He likes a nice linear path, and he likes gameplay that doesn't fail him when he gets to a certain level of skill with it, and there's nothing wrong with that. It's just... Games aren't always that way, you see. And I fucked that up. Anyway... But I don't know, I like Virgil, but I hate how the game wants you to play him. I don't like standing still to get my combo. Like, why do I get concentration faster by standing still than I do by going balls to the wall aggressive with different combos? That, to me, is, is bad. It's really, really fucking bad. And uh, I don't much remember this fight. Oh, Angelos. Oh, God! Oh, my goodness! Can I just get it off, please? <laughs> this game is insane. Ow. Now this is just something else. Can I just stand in this corner, please? Don't poke me, dickhead. Don't poke me. You dare poke me, son. Right. I'm using this because it's the quickest way of clearing rooms. I apologise it's not the most interesting thing to watch, although I think it looks amazing. <laughs> oh, it's instant skill, dude. Instant skill. Who knew such a move existed? But a lot of people were asking what I was trying to do uh, in the previous video. That was not it. <laughs> what is that flat uh, cross doing? I can't tell. Yeah, they come with the, the hyper armor. Oh, we stopped him. Oh, I couldn't jump. Everything you do with this character traps you in an animation. It's really frustrating. Oh, he's healing. So he should really stand still and get the thing back. He's gonna attack me now. Here it comes. No? Yes. Um, Mr. Frost. What was I saying? Uh, I can't remember. That is one of the ca casualties of this. 
Uh, what level is this? Have we killed the frog yet? Yeah, we killed the frog last level. Oh, what I was trying to do against the bale. That's a good place to start. Uh, I was trying to show you the second punch in the Beowulf combo, but at the time, my concentration mode was low, and I'd gone into the, uh, the is it the guard breaker, the dragon breaker, which is essentially the equivalent of a, a real impact that Virgil does by holding back and lock on when you do that. But you do it to level three, and he does he does his fancy move. And you can devil trigger distort it, but it's not as powerful as the the third level of release on the other move. Uh, I don't know why I've come down here, because if we've killed Bale, it means we're going towards Agnes's research lab, which I'm not really looking forward to. Although I do like... Um, a lot of people call it trick cancelling, which is where you use the bringer that this guy's got, the buster, which somebody likes the way I say that in the comments, apparently. I sound dirty when I say it. No idea why, but there you go. But you cancel your animations with the buster. Effectively. This is something you really want to practice because the timing is not hard, it's just particular. And anything that's got a sharp timing can be mistimed as easily as it can be landed. So you need to be aware of that. Um, But I, just, I don't understand the, the, the concentration mode working the way it does. I can understand it going down because it's insanely powerful, but when you miss, this is a game where the enemies are incredibly evasive at times, and where your attacks, you can guide them to a certain degree, but it's so easy to miss. I just skipped another cutscene. No! I'm so sorry, guys. I can't help it. There's too much muscle memory. I will try my best to not do that, but I, I honestly cannot help it. You have no idea. Hundreds of hours of skipping those bloody cutscenes. It's brutal. And I'm ruining my own playthrough, but there you go. At least you get to see gameplay. People like gameplay, don't they? Is this the end of the level? It ends here, doesn't it? You get to the end of this and it does slice, 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 slice. There's a short mission. Shit, I didn't realise it that quick. Oh, 93%. What did we miss? Probably a lot. But we still got the A, so that's all that matters. The A. The S, sorry. 